The prostate gland increases in volume by 2.4 cm per cubic per year on average from 40 years of age and can be affected by hyperplasia, infection, and cancer. The normal prostate is a walnut-sized organ which is composed of a glandular tissue that makes ejaculatory fluid. Because prostatic tissue surrounds the urethra, enlargement or other abnormalities may affect urination. Benign prostatic hyperplasia or BPH is therefore a non-malignant or non-cancerous adenomatous overgrowth of the periurethral prostate gland. The etiologies are known but probably involve the hormonal changes associated with aging. The pathophysiology part, multiple fibroidematous nodules develop in the periurethral region of the prostate, probably originating with the periurethral glands rather than in the true fibromuscular prostate. As the lumen of the prostatic urethra narrows and lengthens, urine outflow is progressively obstructed. Increased pressure associated with micturition and bladder distension can progress to hypertrophy of the bladder detrusor, trabeculation, cellular formation, and diverticula. Incomplete bladder emptying causes stasis and predisposes calculus formation and infection. Prolonged obstruction, even if incomplete, can cause hydronephrosis and compromise renal function. Symptoms include progressive urinary frequency, urgency, and nocturia due to incomplete emptying and rapid filling of the bladder. Decreased size and force of urinary stream cause resistance and intermittency. Sensations of incomplete emptying, terminal dribbling, overflow incontinence, or complete urinary retention may ensue. Straining to void can cause congestion of superficial veins of the prostate urethra and trigon, which may rupture and cause immaturia. Straining also can acutely cause vasovagal syncope and over the long term may cause dilation of the hemorrhoidal veins or inguinal hernias. Some patients present with sudden, incomplete urinary retention with marked abdominal discomfort and bladder distension. Retention may be precipitated by any of the following, thus prolonged attempts to retain urine, immobilization, exposure to cold, and use of anesthetics, and symptoms can be quantified by the 7 question American Geological Association Symptom Score, that is the International Prostate Symptom Score, or IPSS, with 7 symptoms. This score also allows physicians to follow symptom progression, and the scores of more than 10 but less than 20 suggest moderate symptoms, and scores of, of more than 20 suggest severe symptoms. On digital rect examination, the prostate usually is enlarged and untender. It also has a rubbery consistency, in many cases as low as the median furrow. However, prostate sizes detected with digital rect examination may be misleading, as an apparently small prostate may cause obstruction. If distended, the urinary bladder may be palpable or percussible during abdominal examination. Diagnosis is made by digital rectal examination. Although palpable prostate tenons suggest infection, digital rectal examination findings in BPH and cancer often overlap. Cancer may cause a stony, hard, nodular, irregular, and large prostate, and most patients with cancer, BPH, or both have a benign feeling of enlarged prostate. Thus, the patient with symptoms of palpable prostate abnormalities should undergo this testing. Typically, urinalysis and culture are done, and serum prostate-specific antigen levels are measured. Men with moderate or severe symptoms of obstruction may also have urophrometry with measurements of post-void and residual volume by bladder ultrasonography. Flow rate of less than 15 ml per second suggests obstruction and possible residual volume of more than 100 ml suggests retention. Process specific antigen levels. The PSA level is moderately elevated in 30 to 50% of patients with BBH, depending on process size and degree of obstruction, and is elevated in 25 to 92% of patients with prostate cancer, depending on the tumor volume. 
Typically, if the PSA level is more than 4 nanograms per milliliter or if DRE indicates abnormalities other than smooth symmetric enlargement, the nut transrectal biopsy is recommended. For men aged more than 50 years or those at high risk of prostate cancer, a lower cut of our PSA more than 2.5 nanograms per milliliter may be used. Other measures including the rate of PSA increases, free to burn PSA ratio and other markers may be helpful. Sometimes urophlometry and blood astrosonography can be indicated, and transrectal biopsy is done with ultrasound guidance. Clinical judgment must be used to evaluate the need for any further testing. In the treatment, urinary retention requires immediate decompression. This decompression can be done by passage of standard urinary catheter at first attempt, and if a standard catheter cannot be passed, a catheter with a codo tip may be effective. If this one also cannot be passed, a flexible cystoscopy or insertion of filiforms and followers and suprapubic percutaneous decompression of the bladder may be used if transuretral approaches are unsuccessful. For partial obstruction with troublesome symptoms, all anticholinergics, sympathomimetics, and opiates should be stopped and any infection should be treated with antibiotics. For patients with mild to moderate obstruction symptoms, alpha adrenergic blockers like terazosin, doxazosin, tamsulosin may improve voiding. The 5-alpha reductase inhibitors like finasteride and dutasteride may reduce prostate size, decreasing voiding problems over months, and a combination of both classes is done a monotherapy. Surgery is done when patients don't respond to drug therapy or develop recurrent urinary tract infections or upper tract dilation. Transuretral section of the prostate or TURP is the standard surgical procedure and erected function and continence are usually retained, although about 5 to 10 percent of these patients experience some post surgical problems, most commonly retrograde ejaculation. About 10 percent of these men undergoing TURP need the procedure repeated within 10 years because the prostate continues to grow. Larger prostates require open surgery via suprapubic or retropubic approach. And all surgical methods require postoperative catheter drainage for one to seven days.